Hello, this is a 50 year old Honda, so of course, but how? Well, Japanese manufacturing starts by eliminating the seven wastes, known to Honda as the seven muda. Now first is the waste of overprocessing. That'd be finishing a part to a standard that is not really necessary. Next is the waste of superfluous inventory, having more parts on hand than is currently needed. Now this knocks on to a waste of transportation. If I ship here more raws than I need right now, I'll only have to uselessly ship them back to the storage area. The downstream equivalent is a waste of overproduction, producing more than is needed for the next stage of production. Now the risk here is a waste of time, because if I overload the downstream, then well, I've just got to twiddle my thumbs and wait while he runs through his inventory. Of course, if he rushes to catch up, then it risks the waste of everything, producing a defective part that just needs to be disposed of, rendering everything upstream muda. Ah, it's okay, because there is a worse waste yet. That's the waste of propagation. If this workflow is not perfected and I go ahead and sign off on it, make it standard operating procedure, then I've just multiplied all my little inefficiencies by a thousand employees. Now, all of this sounds very anal, but in World War II Japan, it was essential. See, Sochiro Honda's factory was bombed in 44, so storing large amounts of inventory was not an option. He sold the remains of that company in 45 for the equivalent of $3,000. There was no capital, so you had to sell a finished product to finance the raw material for the next. Now, Honda's A-Type was actually built by 12 guys in a 16 square meter workshop, so there was only room for the parts currently being worked on which was just as well because demand in post-war Japan was really low. You go bankrupt trying to bulk build items and push them onto a poor market. So Honda had to build by consumer pull, producing motorcycles just in time for them to be sold. Now all of this was adopted by the global auto industry as just-in-time manufacturing, but it was born out of necessity in war-ravaged Japan. I think our setting is wrong, dude. Like, our, our workshop is exactly the cluttered mess that couldn't have existed for Honda. I think we gotta retake it somewhere cleaner. Hello, this is a 50 year old Honda, so of course, but how? Just in time manufacturing is only enabled by the five S's. Seri is to sort out, to remove anything unnecessary from your workstation. Seitan is to set in order. So if you need a footstool, put it by your left foot. Now we have only the items that we need right where we need them. Say so is often translated as shine for alliterative accentuation, but it really means to keep tidy. Honda's benchmark was that a person with no experience from 15 meters away within five seconds should be able to tell when something is out of place. That's how clean the workstation is supposed to be. Of course, such cleanliness is only possible with seketsu, a standardization of cleanliness. And when there is a standard, it becomes automatic for a supervisor to hold staff accountable. There is, however, one greater S, shitsuke, to sustain by personal discipline. Now see, the five S's, they're meant to be each employee's personal concern, and that way they're maintained whether anyone is around to enforce them or not. And such individual authority at every level of production hey, boss, is the hang real... On, hang on, this isn't working. You should be arriving at the bike in this conclusion, not walking away from it at the intro. He's right. Hello, this is a 50-year-old Honda, so of course... But how? Now, 5S methodology makes it immediately obvious to any employee at any level when something is deficient. And because all of the manufacturing is just in time, those improvements can be applied to the very next part in line. I'll take my meaningless motorcycle moustaches business 
which I set up with our sponsor, Squarespace. And their analytics engine makes it immediately obvious which pages are getting the most hits, but also which pages the viewers are spending less time on, which pages they're leaving my website from. And such order makes it immediately clear how I can target and improve my website. And I can see the Google keywords that people are linking in from, so I know which search terms to bid on. And I can isolate underperforming geographies, so I know where to advertise. And since I sell through Squarespace as well, I can elucidate the traffic sources that are directly converting sales. And click the link below if you also want to make targeted improvements to your business, as Honda did with this swing arm, for example. See, on the CB350, it was a swing arm that had a plate welded to it to carry the axle, and that's very normal. But on this CB404, a line worker noticed that he was welding onto a tapered steel part that could just be pressed into that carrier plate. So that's what Honda did. Or take this little retainer loop on the brake pedal. And this time it was a test rider who got his foot caught between the brake pedal and the engine case, so he suggested Honda add the loop. But then the test rider, a different one, got his pant leg caught in the loop. So he suggested that they enlarge it and then space the pedal four millimeters further from the engine. So starting from engine number 108.4315, that's what Honda did. Nor take the ergonomic. You can tell that I'm a little cramped as a six foot three Canadian on these rear sets and low bars. And this time it was Honda's North American marketing team that noticed that. So from frame number 105.6883 onward, Honda gave us more forward pegs and higher bars. These constant little improvements are known as Kai Zen. Kai for continuous change and Zen for goodness. And that's how the CB404 had three iterations in three years. And that's how it's so reliable five decades later. And to a Westerner, it seems wasteful to improve something thrice only to just abandon it. But to Honda, they noticed three years in, yeah, those engines had developed a rattling sound. So they employed a quality control interrogative technique known as the five whys. The engine is rattling. Why? Because the cam chain is loose. Why? Because the horseshoe tensioner is seized. Why? Because the chain was rubbing up against the tensioner pivot. Why? Because the owner failed to keep it tight enough. Why? Because the port for doing so is located right behind the tire. It gets gunked up and the owner just couldn't be bothered to keep up with the maintenance intervals. You can see how Honda uses the five whys to get down to the root of the problem and then solve that. But when the root of the problem is that consumers are dumbasses, well, Honda will typically just abandon the part and replace it with something that is better designed for human nature like the more idiot-proof tensioner on the CB650 that came after this. You know what, dude? Looking at the parts is kind of boring. Why don't we do something more fun than the edit? Yeah, okay. This is a 50-year-old Honda, so of course, it runs great. Because the desolation of World War II pressed Honda into just-in-time manufacturing. Because JIT is only possible if your workforce is tuned to the five S's. And because 5S naturally illuminates Kaizen continuous refinements. So when people ask if China will conquer motorcycle manufacturing next, tell them that Japan did it by respecting the authority of every worker from top to bottom. And individual authority is the one thing authoritarians can't copy. 